Okay, I am starting a new course uh, which actually will include uh, three part. One is three parts. One is the introduction to climate science itself. Uh, I want to keep this at an elementary level so that uh, any non-climate students and teachers can access it. The second part uh, will use a different book and uh, uh, it is introduction to climate change and the third part uh, is from another book uh, introduction to climate models so climate science climate change and climate modeling uh, the first part I'll start with this nice book which is uh, online freely accessible and uh, being upgraded constantly in terms of figures and uh, interactive uh, links, uh, many useful uh, web links to data, uh, animations, uh, opinions, new science and so on and so forth. It's by Andrea Schmittner from uh, Oregon State University at, at uh, Corvallis. The first chapter is on the uh, introduction to weather and climate and then we'll get into data, paleoclimate data, processes and carbon uh, energy and so on and so forth. So let's start with climate system. I think everybody knows what a system means. Uh, it's basically something that functions together uh, with components that by themselves uh, cannot do what the system does. What do we mean? Think of a human body, okay? We are made up of skeletal system, neural system, uh, digestive system, cardiovascular system, endocrine system and so on and so forth. They all have to work together to make you function fully and the old joke is that uh, what is the difference between a live cat and a dead cat? Uh, I don't mean to be cruel but uh, a dead cat uh, all functions have gone to sleep, uh, it's not breathing and a live cat may have uh, no hearing, may be blind, may be uh, not able to walk, paralyzed, but as long as it's breathing, it's still a live cat. So systems have many components, they to work together and there are detailed definitions of equilibrium, non-equilibrium and so on and so forth, but just get an intuitive sense of it. And here we are showing a, a image, satellite image of uh, Earth to make the point of the climate system, actually it should be called Earth system, but we'll come back to that a little bit later on. So you can see here the ocean, the land, and these greenish colors here are terrestrial ecosystems, so there is a biosphere, and you know that the continents move, so there is a geosphere, there is an atmosphere, there is an ocean, uh, there are uh, uh, glaciers and snow and ice so there are frozen waters which which are the cryosphere and so on and so forth so there are also dynamic reasons why you have these particular uh, features in the clouds that you are looking at uh, all these swirly features the most important thing to remember is that earth is rotating around its axis so you can see the ice and greenland glacier and so on here um, because it's rotating it creates these swirly features if you look at the images from Hubble telescope for example you will also see lots of swirly features how do we think about it let's say you take a cup of coffee black coffee you put milk into it what happens the milk just diffuses over time and doesn't have any specific features but let's say you put milk and then you take a spoon and swirl it around then you will begin to see streaks of milk that may look like this in the coffee till it's all mixed up so on a rotating system you tend to have uh, specific features that get layered especially because the temperatures in the atmosphere from the surface to the top and in the ocean from the surface to the bottom 
change they are called uh, stratified systems which means there are different density layers within the atmosphere and within the ocean which we will look at later on so in such stratified rotating systems specific features become necessary part of the dynamics what do we mean by dynamics basically that's where things are moving so the winds are moving winds are forcing the ocean and producing the uh, ocean currents and making the ocean move and uh, clouds move as well because of the winds and clouds are formed because air is also moving in the vertical it's rising and for uh, s the reasons that we will understand later but you may already have an intuitive sense about it as the air rises it expands because the pressure decreases in the atmosphere from the surface to the top so in a lower pressure the uh, air expands when air expands it cools and whatever water there is in the air uh, condenses and that's what can form clouds and it turns out that the condensing air also re uh, c condensing water also releases the so-called condensation heat uh, and so on and so forth that's what gives us this climate system or the earth system so let's do the earth system as well schematic view of the components of the climate system and processes involved so Typically when we say climate, we're talking about winds, hurricanes, cyclones, ocean currents, uh, ocean temperature, atmospheric temperature, atmospheric humidity, rain, and so on. But once we begin to add chemistry like nitrogen, oxygen, argon, H2O, CO2, and so on, and we add other things like human influences, glaciers, volcanic activity, things like the hydrologic cycle which we will define later on and so on then it's better to call it the earth system because it has the natural spheres that we mentioned like the geosphere biosphere atmosphere cryosphere uh, and the hydrosphere uh, but it also has the anthroposphere or the humans which are affecting everything as well how is the whole system functioning? We have energy coming from the sun. Uh, that's the main source of energy other than, of course, the volcanoes which are releasing uh, energy stored inside or we have uh, geothermal heat being released in some places and so on and so forth. That energy is distributed into the system in creating evaporation from the lakes and oceans and uh, melting of glaciers, it's creating clouds, it's clouds move, so it rains uh, somewhere, clouds are formed somewhere, it can rain somewhere or where the clouds are formed. Uh, we will see why there are winds. It turns out that because Earth is a sphere, generally more energy is received in the low latitudes than is being lost to space as uh, we will learn later and at higher latitudes it turns out that uh, less energy is being received than is being lost to space so that creates the so-called equator to pole temperature gradient so to keep the temperatures from not getting constantly colder and colder at the poles and warmer and warmer uh, in the tropics or low latitudes we have to constantly move energy from a region where there is more energy being received than being lost so there is excess of energy to places where there is a deficit of energy okay so just stare at this for s uh, some time and you will see the amazing details there there is biosphere, soil and biosphere interactions, atmosphere and biosphere interactions, land surface is exchanging energy with the uh, atmosphere as well. All the water moving around in the system is called the hydrologic cycle, so evaporation, precipitation, soil moisture, groundwater and so on. Humans of course are changing the so-called energy balance as we will see later because we are increasing gases in the atmosphere and other uh, particles like carbon, black carbon or soot uh, which actually change the amount of 
energy that is either coming in from the sun or going out from the earth so they change the energy balance which means they change the circulation and so on and ocean is of course very deep so ocean water has much higher heat capacity than land and so on so all these things begin to be important for understanding uh, weather and climate so I haven't said what is weather and what is climate so we will do that as we go forward but this gives you a broad umbrella of the kind of system uh, we are dealing with okay so let me leave this podcast here because it's already 10 minutes long and I will try to do things in 10 minute chunks so that you don't uh, lose uh, attention or you don't get lost so we'll add pieces of information at uh, 10 to 15 minute module sometimes shorter five to six minutes or so depending on the topic okay